Today, we're going to be learning how to make a third-person character controller in Unity. Over the past week or so, I've been making my own character controller for my game, and in this lesson, I'm going to show exactly how I've done that. So the first thing we'll do is navigate to our package manager, and from there, we'll want to make sure that we're inside of the Unity registry tab. Then we'll look for Unity's new input system, install it, and once that install is finished, Unity will need to perform a restart on your project before we can continue with the rest of the character controller. I'm also going to go ahead and install Pro Builder and Pro Grids. This is an optional step. I'm going to do this so that I can set up my initial scene a little bit easier. To get Pro Grids, you're going to have to enable preview packages from your project settings. And once that's enabled, you'll be able to see all of the preview packages within your package manager. I've created an asset pack that you can go ahead and download if you want to follow along with the exact steps in this tutorial. It's essentially just a model of a wizard with a few animations and a character controller set up. If you've got your own model and animations, you can use that as well. So taking a look at the wizard's animation controller, we can see that we've got a blend tree state set up and two other states, one for the jump condition that transitions into the falling state, which then goes back to the blend tree. The blend tree handles all of the movement of our wizard. We've also got three parameters set up, one for the forward vector, the right vector, and also the grounded state, which is a Boolean. We use the forward and right parameters to determine what the value of our blend tree should be and which state it should be in, whether it be in a running state or the idle state. So with our animation controller set up, let's go ahead and create two new scripts for our character controller. I'll call the first character controller and the second third person camera. With those scripts ready to go, I'm also going to set up our new input system. So I want to right click and create a new input action. I'll call that one player inputs, making sure it's plural as we don't want to overwrite the base definition. Opening up the interface for that input action, I'm going to create a new action map called player. And then I'm going to also create a new action for that one, which will be the move action. We'll want to set that one up as a vector two action input type. Then we'll also go ahead and add a new 2D vector composite binding. We can then remove the old binding and then we'll fill in the new up, down, left and right inputs and bind them to our WASD keys. I'm going to make sure I tick the autosave checkbox before I forget and then we can go ahead and create another binding which I'll call look and we'll want to bind that one to vector 2 as well. For the binding I'm going to be using the mouse delta. I'm also going to add two new actions, one for my run and one for my jump, binding those to control and space respectively. Now I'll go ahead and close my input actions window and I'll want to make sure that my wizard character has a player input game object on it. Also making sure that we have the character controller script attached to this wizard. I'll select the player inputs as the action set for this. And with that done, we have all the basics ready for us to jump into the code. Before we jump into the code, I'd just like to let you guys know that I've started my own community Discord. So if you're looking for help, anything game dev related, or just want a place to hang out, feel free to join that one. A link for that will be in the description down below. So inside of our character controller class, we're going to create two private variables, one for the animator and one for the rigid body. We'll create a new awake method where we'll set these two variables by getting their components off of the game object. Next, at the top of my class, I'm just going to use the required component tag to make sure that this game object has an animator, a collider, and a rigid body on it. Because the first thing I usually like to do is set up animation states for my character controller, I'm going to create a grounded check so that we can transition into our blend tree properly. I'll do this by creating a new flag for the grounded boolean, and then we'll want to set this variable in our update loop by using a physics check sphere method. I'll be creating two new serializable fields at the top of my class, one for the ground check transform and one for the ground check distance. We'll need to be using these two variables within our check sphere method. We'll also need a variable to store the layer mask of the ground. So this is essentially just the information we're passing into our sphere check of what we should be colliding with. I'll set up those variables into our check sphere method, making sure that we set our query trigger interaction enumerator to ignore. This will essentially just ignore any is trigger colliders. And finally, I'm going to set up the Boolean property of grounded within our animator to be whatever our grounded variable is. This will make sure that our animation controller transitions to the jump state when we're not on the ground. So back within Unity, just make sure that your character controller has a rigid body and a collider component attached to it. I'm just setting those properties up now. 
I'm also just going to create a new empty game object within my wizard and name that one ground check. And we're going to be using this one as the transform that we pass into our new character controller component. Now, since I haven't already in my game, I'm going to create a new layer for my ground. And I'm probably just going to call that one grounded. And then I'll be using that one on our character controller. And I'll have to select the ground layer as grounded. And anything in the game that you want to act as your ground, you'll also have to set its layer to grounded. And now when we hit play, we can see that our character is in its idle state, meaning that our ground check variable is working as intended. So with the game scene set up and our animations working as intended, I think that wraps up episode one of this micro series. I sort of want to keep these episodes short to not cover too many topics within one episode. If you'd like to keep up to date on this mini series and when I release part two, feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.